Happy Monday. It's cloudy here, but I don't think it's going to rain, but it's Monday and I'm dressed for work because half of our staff is going to be at the uh, Pennsville Clinic this morning learning how to use our brand new, we had digital x-ray before, but we just got an update. Uh, the old one was put in 10 years ago, so we got brand new equipment came in and they're coming in to do training today, so I'm working at the other office. <clears throat> so before I sat down, I, I, I've told you in the past that when it comes time to do a Facebook Live, I never know what I'm going to talk about. I rarely know what I'm going to talk about until, you know, the minute before when Hugh says, what's our title? So I have a couple of consultations coming up and I said, well, let me flip and see what the topic of these consultations is. And that can, you know, maybe I'll find something. And that's usually how I figure out something to talk about. So uh, I pulled up this one and I said, oh, okay. That is a really weird statement from this veterinarian. So um, uh, the owner wrote in and said, uh, to their veterinarian, I was wondering if you ever run a titer test to determine if a dog needs a rabies vaccine or not. Good question. Just wondering if this may be an option since my dog has a history of seizures um, and has a, a lot of allergies and other problems. And I'm hesitant to put anything else in his system at his older age. And this is a nine-year-old dog with a history of seizures, allergies, GI problems, et cetera, et cetera. So, in my clinic, uh, just that history of seizures alone would be enough for me to say, hey, we're in, we're in a state where we can write exemptions. Let's write an exemption for this dog. And I would not recommend, hi, Sharon. Uh, hi, Joyce. I would not recommend vaccinating this dog for rabies. So here's the veterinarian's answer. And I want to know what rock they're hiding under and where they studied immunology and where they got this information from. It says, unfortunately, there is not a reliable rabies vaccine titer that can determine vaccine protection in dogs. Excuse me? We've been doing those for years. We have to do those to import, export dogs in and out of the country. That's what Kansas State University Lab does. That's what Dr. Rob does. That's what Gene Dodd's Hemapet Lab does. Yeah, we can do a rabies titer, but this is... You know, this is their veterinarian's answer. There is not a reliable rabies vaccine titer that can determine vaccine protection in dogs. There are other vaccine titers that can help determine some types of immunity, but not for rabies. Also, since rabies vaccination of dogs is a law and regulated by state and local health departments, they will not recognize a rabies vaccine titer as proof of immunity. Now, that part is true in most states. Delaware is changing that. However, we're in New Jersey, and they do recognize exemption letters. So, and the veterinarian goes on to say, I don't see that your dog has had an allergic reaction to vaccines or a seizure after vaccination in the past. Well, he's probably, and I haven't gone through it all, but he's probably on anti-seizure meds. So bad correlation. Uh, but if you're concerned, you could try giving him Benadryl for 24 hours before his vaccine and continue for 24 hours after his vaccine. Okay, sure. That dose of Benadryl is the only thing standing between your dog's life and death if he has an anaphylactic reaction to a vaccine. Thanks for reaching out. Let me know if you have any further questions. Well, I'm not going to ask you any further questions because you didn't give the right answer. <laughs> it's so depressing that all, not all vets are great. You know, this may be a very good veterinarian, but this is a very wrong answer. Very wrong answer. We have great rabies titers. They're awesome. We can get a level and what Kansas, whether it's arbitrary or whether they've actually done the testing, Kansas State University says that any vaccine titer greater than 0 0.5 is protective immunity. And we can even do endpoint titers so we can actually get a number of where they really are. When we tested Pookie, she was at 14.1. That's pretty high. I'd say she's protected. When my technician Carly wanted to uh, take her cat to Radio Cat for the uh, hyperthyroid treatment, 
they said, well, you've got to have an up-to-date rabies vaccine. And this is obviously an old cat with hyperthyroid disease and some other things going on. And she said, I really don't want to vaccinate my cat. Will you take a titer? And they said, yes, we will. And that cat had had one rabies vaccine when it was a year old. And it's now 12. And it's rabies vaccine titer was over 10. Pretty protective. So this veterinarian needs to get some up-to-date information. I have no idea the age of this veterinarian. I've never even heard of this veterinary clinic. So I don't, it is in New Jersey, but I've never heard of this clinic. So I don't know who this vet is. I guess I can look them up before I have to do my consultation with these people later this week. So, and they don't want to do the paperwork. Well, the paperwork for a rabies exemption literally is a one page form that is the name, address of the owner and the, you know, breed, weight, sex, color of the dog. Name, address of the veterinarian with a signature. And then there's a little space that says, why is this dog exempt or cat? And you, you just write in there, seizures, allergies, cancer, take your pick. So yeah, not up to date. Vets in your area want Bordetella. Well, you only should get Bordetella if you have it as a requirement for boarding, daycare, training. Um, what else do we do with dogs? You know competitions where things like that are required. Don't just give it because it's available. You know, I mean, we're, we're, it's extra paperwork. You better say it, it, it is so little. How much, uh, is the tighter for rabies? Um, prices are all over the place and it is the most expensive of any of the titers. If you want that endpoint titer, which is the import export one, and we don't, we rarely do that one unless we actually are importing exporting out of the country. Um, and that one can be a couple hundred dollars easily, but the general rabies titer, just to say protected or not protected, 100, 125. I mean, it's not God awful. The problem is Townships and uh, counties and states will not recognize a titer for to replace vaccination for licensing. Now, we've got some township clerks in our area who are taking them. That's illegal in New Jersey to take a titer, but they're doing it. So I can only assume that these clerks and township people are a little more on the holistic side or they don't know, they don't care, and they're just like, oh, there's something that says your dog is protected. Got it. Good enough. So I don't know, but hey, if they'll take it, they'll take it and I, I'm happy. So is it driven by the need for revenue too or is a way to ensure that pets come in for an annual wall check? Well, um, I mean, the rabies vaccine is required for licensing. It is a zoonotic disease that is not treatable. So there's a good reason why we want to get as many pets as possible vaccinated for rabies, especially if you live in a high risk area. Rabies is endemic in our area. There are uh, cats and raccoons <laughs> and skunks that are positive in our county, well, both counties where my practices are, almost every month. I mean, it's, it's an all year round thing. So rabies is endemic in our area. I have had animals in my practice bitten by rabid animals. It is a problem. But if I have an animal who's had a vaccine in the past, and particularly, and usually what I tell people is, hey, just for your own information, let's get a titer and see if they're protected. Okay, they're protected, great. We can write an exemption, we know you're okay. So it's up to you. Okay, yeah, protectthepets.com uh, is Dr. Rob. And uh, so that's an, he's probably the least expensive uh, way to go. But you've still got to get the blood drawn and spun down. So you've got to go into your veterinarian. You're going to have to pay for an office visit and the blood draw. Um, but then you can have it shipped there or you can ship it there yourself. So um, <laughs> just don't register or license your dog. Well, there, there is that flying under the radar thing. Um, you know, I, I, I can't promote that publicly on a public forum. Uh, that's your choice and your option. So, okay, I got to go to work.